Okay, all right, making sure I'm on. All right, so this video is about cross contour application, also known as wireframe. So if you ever saw a 3D animation program um, and you can kind of have a wireframe um, version of the form that's being created, that's what we're gonna make somewhat. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is, I just have a, a simple cube here, but you can apply this to anything. Um, I just have this here. You could apply it to here as well, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But basically, I'm just, I've covered this in a different part of the um, assignment, I think in um, uh, the very, maybe stage two, uh, where I show you how to divide the space and divide the space. So we're actually gonna do that, but a little bit more now. This is. In stage two, I was just showing you how to shift and move rectangles and slice it up like bread. In this case, we're going to create a cross contour line. Um, to keep things simple, just divide it in quarters. And you should know how to do that already. But this will be a review because it was so long ago when we did that. So I'm going to cross my corners. And what that does, it finds my center. Okay, so I have my center line. And I'm going to draw a line in this direction, which goes to that vanishing point. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, before I lose it, do you see where this line intersects that uh, line here? I'm going to put a little dot there. And I'm going to connect it down to the right vanishing point, right there. In this case, I didn't have to find the center. I already found it here, and I'm just going to slice it down there. So I'm gonna do that again, but as I'm doing this, it's just, you can use your kneaded eraser if you want. It just makes sense to erase the cross corner lines because it's gonna drive me nuts. Now we're gonna break this rectangle in half and I just cross my corners again, except I'm gonna start here to here and here to here. And there's my center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line to the vanishing point there. And then again, once it intersects this line here, I take it down to the right vanishing point. Um, that was in half, so I got that. So I just divide this in half here. Um, if I'm just breaking this down into quarters, if you want to break it down in eighths, be my guest. Do it again. Or you could do the railroad or fence post um, approach. That works as well. Once you find the center, run it down. So I'm going to erase those diagonal lines because I don't need them now. But you can see that I broke this into quarters as it go as going away from me in space. So as a reminder, the section up here should be much smaller than the section down here. All right. I'm also going to divide it in this direction, hence the cross contour. So a contour line is crossing. Um, I already found my center this way because the center is, can go for both vertical or horizontal. So in theory, these three points should all line up with that point, and they do. Theory is being applied. Um, See where this line intersects this corner? I'm gonna take it down to the right vanishing point. Anything on this plane and this plane is gonna to go to that vanishing point unless I go this direction or that direction. All right, um, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna lightly erase these um, diagonal lines again so I don't confuse myself and the viewers. All right, uh, so I'm gonna to have to divide this space in half but instead of dividing this corner all the way down to this corner, it doesn't matter. I can just find the center of this guy here. So what if I just did this? I already had that drawn, part of the drawn already. And I connected there. That center is the same center all the way through. So I'm just gonna connect that center right to the third vanishing point. And since it intersects this line here, I'm gonna run it down to the right vanishing point. Okay, I'm gonna do that again on this side. Connect my corners. Find my center. 
And that connects to the third finishing point. Ah, son of a gun. I was doing so good. My ruler slipped a little bit. Sorry about that. All right. Better. Okay, so once it intersects this line here, take it to the right vanishing point. And there you go. Um, this side, this plane here, I'm also going to break up in quarters in that direction. It's going to get really small. But before I do that, I'm just going to erase these diagonal lines. So this side is done. This plane on this side is complete. I can erase these if I want, just so they don't confuse me later. So again, I'm just going to find my center, but to find the center, I'm just going to cross these two corners here. Finds my center. And I connect it to the third vanishing point. Okay, I'm gonna do that again here and here. That's why I erase those lines. Center point. Good. Didn't want to take it too far here. Erase my diagonals and put this one in. Now, I do erase after I make those steps often. Just, if you don't erase and you just keep moving forward, you're gonna get confused with the line and you're gonna make a mistake. It seems like it's just gonna be a slower process if you do that, but it actually speeds things up because you're gonna make a mistake and have to go and backtrack. All right. See, I don't have to do anything to this plane because these lines already tell me where that is. Uh, so see this little, uh, this line it intersects this guy here, run it to the left vanishing point. Same thing on this guy, run it to the left vanishing point and run it to the left vanishing point. All right, we have created a wireframe around this rectangle in three point perspective. Um, I can do a couple things here. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I'm, I will round this out. So the other part of this project is to um, transition from geometry to organic. So what I, I'm just gonna do that really quickly just to you kind of get the idea here. See this corner? I'm gonna round out this corner like right here. And I'm gonna to try to repeat that same rounding out all the way down, okay? Um, where this line starts to enter back into this geometric line, I'm gonna put my point of my pencil there, run my ruler into it, connect it to the third vanishing point, and just mark those little, make little points all the way down. Let me do the same thing on this side. Oop, I should've went down even further. Uh, I'll explain this. If you're working super small, you don't have to take all these precautions. You can kind of eye some of it, but in this case, because it's a large rectangle that's going to be in your drawing, you want to have some consistency. So basically, I just made a point here, and I'm also going to just kind of uh, eye the, the other part, so I'm just going to round this out. But at least I know where to come back and forth. It might help if I angle it. Help me. It's easy. It's easier for me to draw. And last but not least, all right. So now I look at this right here and I've rounded that corner off and I can take off the geometry part. Don't need it anymore. It's carved off like a whittler carves wood. And that quickly you have this kind of somewhat of an organic or a curved form. Uh, I'm just gonna just kind of blend some of that dark value into the line already. So it just has a better transitioning. And then eventually I would go in with a 
darker pencil and kind of clean this up. I'm using a pretty dark pencil now, a B, just so I could show you um, what I'm doing. Uh, so the camera can pick it up. Now, a couple more things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run this around this side and this is where things can get a little confusing because you're gonna have to draw this as if it's transparent. So let me explain myself. If, well, before I go any further, what, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. You see this back corner here? I'm gonna run this down to the right vanishing point. Just a little bit though, just a little bit of a line. I'm gonna also do it here. Here. And I'll explain myself in a moment here. That one already has it. So if I were to curve this line, right? And I were to kind of curve it behind the form. Do you see this little curve that I made? It looks like a C. I'm gonna draw that same C in all these little corners I just made. There's definitely gonna be one right here. But before I put this one in, since I committed to this one, and that's the shape, I'm gonna put the ruler right on that point, the farthest edge out, which is right here, connected to the third vanishing point. And I'm just gonna mark off where I should be. Do you see that C I made before? I totally missed where I should have been. And this little mark just allows me to, it, can, it gives me a, um, a guide. All right, now, what I do next is I erase the left side here, the old geometry, because if you sand it off, that corner is gone. And then after that, I take my ruler, put it on the bottom corner, and then I just run a line straight up. And then you have this kind of curved edge. You can do the same thing on this side. You can also curve down here. Um, so just curve up here if you want and make this kind of just uh, round form. So I'll curve down here just to show you how this whole process works. So what I do is I just select one of the, one, one of these, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I might lose that one a little bit. That might get a little confusing because it was over here, but now it's going to be here. Um, and I just selected one of those five and I committed to it. Now I look where I start to deviate from that line, which is about right here, right? I put my pencil there. I connect it to the left vanishing point. And I'm just gonna mark off where, oops. I'm gonna put one here just in case, even though that's not there, I just, I'm just not sure yet how it's gonna work out for me. And then this is where it starts to join back into the line about right there. Take this, touch, touch, touch. Okay, and then I'm also looking at the distance between here and here. I'm just gonna kind of eye it as I, you know, it's gonna change a little bit for each one of them, but as long as you go back into where you were supposed to, it should line up and look about right. Um, Mm -hmm. I am going to put this one there as well. And uh, this one would have gone right here, but because it's not there anymore, I guess. <laughs> this, is, this is where I get confused too. Um, I think I can just leave it alone. This will go odd though. What if I were to, if this was the new line, now you can kind of see me problem solving here. If I did something like this, well, what would happen there? That might work. I'm gonna take this out. 
See what happens. Yeah, it looks, looks about right. And then again, I didn't, I'm, I'm never a fan of just having this part really dark and then the rest of the line light. So I always like to fade it back in, even if you have to use your ruler to fade it back in so your eye kind of follows that line. Otherwise you just really make the corner a focal point and I don't want that. And I'm gonna erase this, this, and this. And that starts to kind of get this curvilinear form. Now I'm gonna show you another trick. Um, what if I was to pull one of these rectangles, as you see here, down? I'll use my big ruler for this one. And how am I doing on time? All right, I'm not gonna go in any more than 20 minutes, but this is a, since I'm continuing this. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these four corners, one, two, three, four, and I'm pulling them down. I'm just gonna bring them down to the ground plane ground plane is anything below the horizon line, which is right here. And this is a fast way of activating space if you had a, an area that was really um, unactivated, etc. I should put these in, but if you do this one, you can figure the other side out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna erase everything inside of this. I can even erase that back corner, that, that line I just put in. Uh, just so you understand what it did. I took one of the one of the rectangles that was divided up and I just pulled it down. And I will end it right here. And now it looks like it's this little column thing is sticking up and holding up this form. Almost like a flower or a plant. Um, so this is what I call the fun part. Um, do you see this plane here? I'm going to try to integrate or uh, blend this into here so it becomes this sort of kind of organic turn. So what I'm going to do is I'll blend this into there, there like that, like so, right? I will do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna go to the smaller ruler so you can see what I'm doing. And then again, same rules apply, where I start to deviate from the line, I'm putting the tip of my pencil there, running the ruler into it, connecting to the vanishing point, just so I can mark the other side. Doing the same thing here, where it comes back into the line, run it over here, marking the side. And then now I can just do some, I can put this corner in, okay? Um, I can erase this. I can erase this because you no longer see that line. And if you want, you could actually blend this corner out here. I don't have to do anything else except erase this guy. Um, I'm fine with that. Actually, I just realized that it would look better if it blended in the line going this way. So I'm better with this. This makes much more sense. Okay. Um, if you want to create cross contours here, it might give you another line, but that's okay. I don't care about that. Uh, you need to find the old points of the geometry so I could find my center. And there's the center, right? So I'm gonna take the center line to the third vanishing point. And basically, um, uh, da, 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 da. oh, I guess go just a little bit more. Right where it hits here, go to that vanishing point there. And once it hits that corner here, I believe it goes to this vanishing point here. Does that make sense? Oh, I just missed it, son of a gun. So it doesn't look like it's in the center. That's better. 
Okay. Um, so now, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Uh, this is where it comes in. This is where it enters back in. I'm gonna blend this in. Uh, this is, line this up, line this up. This kind of does this. And then this just goes straight up. So I can just kind of continue that line straight up. And if it has another cross contour here, so be it. It's not a big deal. It doesn't be, everything doesn't be perfect and even as long as it's doing what it's supposed to do. So you can kind of see how I just made this form grow. Um, real quick, I know it's a super long video, but I'm going to make another one here and connect it uh, to this line. Connect this to this line. Connect this to this line. Just to show you how, there you go. And then you can round this out and then round this out and then round this out. Of course, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm doing this the wrong way because I'm supposed to connect this line to the vanishing point. I'm just trying to speed things up. Um, so you can see how I can round off the right side. But before I go any further, you see how I pulled this line out here? Check this out. I'm just going to grab two or I'm sorry, one rectangle here, and I'm putting these dark points in. Can you see those four points? Connect them to the left vanishing point here and extend that direction. One, two, I only need to put three in because the fourth one you can't even see because it's behind the form. But if you want me to put it in just so you understand what I'm doing, I'll put it in lightly. And then after that, you just erase everything inside of that just like I had before. And then I have this thing half happy. I could do that same thing here. Um, connect to the right side. Bam. Fingers got in the way. Bam. And bam. Um, note to self, one more little trick I'm going to show you. If you you go outside of this point and, and that point, this now becomes your horizon line. And that is your third point. So all you gotta do is do something like this and something like this. And it looks normal. Um, I hope this was helpful and try some of these on your drawing.